Today we are going to learn about definite integrals. As far as history of definite integrals is considered, contribution of two mathematicians has been extraordinary. One is Riemann, a German mathematician, another is Lebeg, a French mathematician. I request all my students to learn about both of them more and get motivated. Let us see what are the applications of definite integrals. So there are several applications of uh, definite integrals. For example, you can use definite integrals to compute length of a curve, area of planar region, area of curved surface. For example, surface area of a sphere, volume, for example, volume of a sphere, mass, etcetera. So, you can see that there are a lot of applications of definite integrals. So, I have taken area as an example to understand what do we mean by definite integrals. So, as you know from earlier classes that you can compute area of simple shapes like triangle, rectangle, circle, etcetera. And if you have a complicated shape, for example, if you are asked to evaluate area of this shape, you can break this area into finite number of simple shapes and then you can compute individual areas of all these simple shapes and sum it up to get the actual area. This is the required area, but this concept of breaking the complicated area into simple shapes is not always applicable. For example, there are several real life problems and there are several mathematical problems in which you will have shapes which we cannot divide into finite number of shapes whose area is known to you. So, we will see certain examples where you cannot divide the area into finite number of shapes whose area is easily computable. So, area bounded between a line and a curve. Let us take y equals to 1 and y equals to x square. Let us plot them. So, this is your y axis, this is x axis. So, y equals to 1 is a line parallel to x axis and y equals to x square is a parabola whose vertex is 0, 0 and axis is y axis. So, if you plot it, you get this. So, your required area is I request all students to see whether they can break it into finite number of shapes whose area is known to you. Try. Let us see some more examples. Example 2, area bounded between two curves. y equals to x square and y square equals to x. Let us plot them. This is your y axis, this is your x axis. 
So y equals to x square is a parabola whose vertex is 0, 0 and axis is x axis. So you have this parabola and y, equal, y square equals to x is again a parabola whose vertex is 0, 0 and axis is x axis. So you have this parabola and this is the area that is required bounded between them. Let us see some more examples, motivating examples why we are requiring definite integral. So area bounded between three curves. So one curve is y equals to root 2x, another is y equals to under root 2x minus x square and another is a line x equals to 2. Let us plot them. So y equals to under root 2x minus x square is a circle. You can write this equation in the following form. So you can see that this is a circle with center 1 comma 0 and radius 1. So you get the circle radius 1 comma 0, center 1 comma 0, radius 1. Let us plot y equals to root 2x. y equals to root 2x is parabola whose vertex is 0, 0 and axis is x axis. So you get this parabola and x equals to 2 is a line since this uh, co coordinate of this point is 2 comma 0. So the line will be tangent to the circle at this point. So this is the required area. The point to note here is that this parabola is not going to intersect the circle anywhere else except 0 comma 0 which is clear if you solve y equals to root 2x and y equals to under root 2x minus x square. If you solve both of them you will see that they intersect only at 0 comma 0. So again I request all my students to see whether they can divide this area into finite number of shapes and add it to get the um, area of this uh, region. This is the final example, most complicated and let me tell you why I am giving these examples is that uh, at the end we will be solving all these problems and we will be seeing how these problems can be taken care by definite integrals. So final example is area bounded between four curves and I have taken four parabolas y square equals to 4x, y square equals to 16x, y equals to 4x square and y equals to 16x square. So if you plot them, say this is your y-axis, this is your x axis. So y square equals to 4x and y square equals to 16x, they are having vertex 0, 0 and vertex 0, 0 and axis as x axis. So you get these two parabolas. And y equals to 4x square and y equals to 16x square, they are again parabolas but whose vertex is 0, 0 and axis is y axis. So you get these two parabolas and so this is your y square equals to 4x sorry y equals to 4x square and this is y equals to 16x square. So this is the region. Again I request all of you to see whether you can break it into finite number of shapes whose area is known to you and finally you can, can you compute this area by known methods from earlier classes 
And all these examples that I have discussed so far, we will see at the end and we will sol solve by using definite integrals and compute the required area. So let us define a definite integral. A definite integral is defined in this form where A is called lower limit and B is called upper limit. And this represents area of the function. Let us assume so, uh, that fx is positive. So if you plot it, this is y-axis, this is x-axis, this is your function. This is x equals to a, this is x equals to b. So this definite integral represents this area. Now the question is how to compute this value a. There are two methods to compute, one is by limit of finite sums and another is by using antiderivatives. We will see first how this limit of finite sum evolved over the time. Let us see how this limit of finite sums has evolved. So for that again I will consider one example and I will ask you to find out area bounded between y equals to 0, y equals to 1 plus x square, x equals to 0 and x equals to 1. So let us plot this region first. So this is your y axis, this is your x axis. So y equals to 1 plus x square is again a parabola whose vertex is 0 comma 1 and whose axis is y axis. So you get this shape, this is 0 comma 1 and this is x equals to 0, say this is x equals to 1 this is y equals to 0, this is y equals to 1 plus x square. So we are looking for this shaded area. So it is by definite integral the value of the area will be 0 to 1, 1 plus x square dx. So let us use the same trick which we were doing earlier and we were dividing the area into finitely many shapes. So what we do, we divide this area into two sub areas by taking this midpoint of the interval, say this is x equals to half. And then we draw rectangles like this and we compute area of these two rectangles. Say this area of this rectangle area of this rectangle is R1 and this is R2. So we will say that area of the to, uh, both of the rectangles L2 is R1 plus R2. R1 is area of the first rectangle, smaller one and the R2 is area of the bigger one. Now if we compute this, we get half, half is the width of this rectangle and height is governed by function value at x equals to 0. So we get 1 plus 0, then half into function value at half, so we get 1 plus 1 by 4. This will be equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 4, which we can write as 1 plus 1 by 8 which is 9 by 8 whose value is equal to 1.125. Now if you see A is the actual area required and L2 is a, a summation of area of these two rectangles. So while calculating this area we have excluded 
this area. So, this L 2 is lesser than the area required, L 2 is lesser than the area required. Now, let us uh, try to approximate the actual area by another method. So, for that we have to draw the figure again. This is x, this is y and this is the parabola 1 plus x square. Say this is x equals to 1, this is x equals to 0, this is y equals to 0 x axis. Now, we divide again this sub area in uh, this area into two sub areas, this is half, this is 1, this is 0. Now, instead of uh, taking those rectangles which we have taken, we take this as a rectangle and this as a rectangle and say this area is R 1 bar and this is R 2 bar. So, if we add R 1 bar and R 2 bar, we get say U 2 and this value will be half into function value at half because height of the this small rectangle is governed by function value at half. So, you get 1 plus 1 by 4 plus half into function value at 1 which is 1 plus 1. So, if we compute we get which is 13 by 8 and this is equal to 1.625. Now, this sum that we have computed that we u 2 that we have computed is referred as upper sum and in the last calculation we have computed L 2, we have computed L 2 that is referred as lower sum. Now, here what we can see is that u 2 is always greater than u 2 is always greater than actual area because this much area extra has been computed. The required area is this, so this much area is added. So, u 2 is u 2 is greater than actual area and L 2 is less than actual area. The value of L 2 was 1.125. Now, let us uh, see how to how to get the actual area. So, what we see from our computations that if we so in once we have computed l2 we have taken this rectangle and once we have computed uh, uh, l2 have taken this rectangle and this rectangle so how to increase the accuracy so what we do we if we divide this area into further sub areas say this is 1 by 4, this, this was half, this is 3 by 4, this is 1, this is 0. So, now you can see that we will be getting this rectangle, area of this rectangle plus area of this rectangle, this rectangle and area of this rectangle. So, some more area will be included hence the value will be this these two portions are now included in our approximated area. We say this is L 4, this is another lower sum we refer as L 4 and L 4 is summation of area of these four rectangles. This will be equal to 1 by 4 
into height of this rectangle which is governed by the function value is 0 because function is increasing. So, we get 0 1 by 4 into function value at 0. So, this is 1 plus 0 then 1 by 4 into 1 plus function value at 1 by 4. So, we get 1 by 16 plus 1 by 4 function value at half. So, 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 into function value at 3 by 4. So, 1 plus 9 by 16. Therefore, L 4 is equal to 1 by 4 to 4 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9 by 16 which is equal to 1 plus 14 by 4 into 16 which is equal to 32 by 32 plus 7 by 32 which is 39 by 32 whose value is 1.218. Now, recall that your L 2 was 1.125. So, what do you see that L 2 is lesser than L 4 and L 4 is lesser than A, because we are we have left certain area while we have approximated the actual area by rectangles. Now, let us compute the approximate area again and by dividing this into 4 sub intervals and by taking these rectangles. Earlier we were having this these two rectangles, so we were having this much area extra. So, now this area will be neglected. So, u 4 u 4 stands for 4 intervals u 4 will be lesser than u 2, but it is actually greater than the actual area. So, u 4 the value of u 4 is this time the, uh, the height of the first rectangle will be governed by function value at 1 by 4. So, 1 by 4 into 1 plus 1 by 16 plus 1 by 4 into 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 into 1 plus 9 by 16. This is half, this is 3 by 4, this is 1 plus 1 by 4 into 1 plus 1. So, this time the height is governed by the function values at this point, this point, this point and this point. So, we have just u 4 and value of u 4 is 1 by 4 again 4 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 by 16. So, we get 1 plus 30 by 4 into 16. which is equal to 47 by 32 which is equal to 1.46875. So, recall that value of u 2 was 1.625. So, finally, from these calculation what we are getting is that the lower sums satisfy this relationship and upper sums satisfy this relationship. So, if we have n sub intervals what, what will happen? So, every time we increase more number of points in the between the interval we will be getting a value which is closer to actual area both from upper side and lower side that is from lower sum and upper sum. So, if we increase the number of sub intervals 
upper sum decreases and lower sum increases. But if we take finite number of sub subdivisions, sub intervals, we will never be able to get the actual value. So, what we do if we take the limit of these ln's and un's, we will see that both of these values will converge to a single value and that will be your actual value of the integral that is 0 to 1, 1 plus x square dx. Let us see one example how we can use this trick to find out actual area. The example is let us take a function, let f x be a continuous function on closed interval a b. In addition to this assume that f x is positive. The reason behind this assumption that it is easy to explain an area will lie only on one side of x axis. And assume that f x is increasing so first we will do it for increasing function but this theory can be extended to any continuous function which is not increasing so let us try to find out area of fx which lies between x equals to a and x equals to b and that is above x axis so let us draw the picture since we have assumed that fx is positive and increasing in the interval ab we can assume the graph like this this is your fx this is x axis this is y axis now divide a b into n sub intervals of equal length. So, say now number the points say this is x naught this is x n. So, x naught is a x n is b. So, we have divided this interval into n sub intervals of equal length. So, what will happen that this by this will give you the length of each sub interval and say that is h. Since points are equally spaced, so x k any point can be computed by this formula. Where k goes from 1 to n. So, we have this situation. What we have done? We have divided this area into sub areas by taking equally spaced points points on x axis now let us define ln lower sums so this is x naught, this is x 1, this is x 2, this is x n, this is x n minus 1. So, to define L, ln we find out area of these rectangles which lie below the curve. So, ln is this width into this height. So, since the points are equally spaced, so height of width of each sub interval width of each rectangle is h. So, l n is h into f x naught plus h into f x 1. For the last one, the height will be governed height of the rectangle will be governed by the function value at x n minus 1. So, h into f x n minus 1. 
So, we can write ln as summation f x k into h k goes from 0 to n minus 1. Similarly, we can define u n for u n we construct the rectangles like this. Since the function is increasing u n will be upper sums will be defined as h into function value at x 1 because the function is increasing. So, height of this rectangle will be governed by the function value at x 1. So, h into f x 1 plus h into f x 2. For the last one we will get h into f x n. So, we can write this also as summation of k goes from 1 to n f x k into h. So, what we have seen that l n is summation k goes from 0 to n minus 1 f x k into h and u n is summation k goes from 1 to n f x k into h. From the previous discussion we have seen that l n's always they are lesser than actual area and u n's are always greater than actual area and their limiting values gives you the actual area. So, if you take the limit of l n that is if you take the limit of k equals to 0 to n minus 1 f x k into h this gives you the area of the function which lies between x equals to a x equals to b. So, you can see that how this integral is related with summation from this formula. You can evaluate the integral by using either lower sums or upper sums value of the integral is not going to change. So, if you you can use zeons also to compute the area of the curve given curve but lying between a and b above x axis. Now, let us solve some examples and see how this theory works. So, find out area between y equals to 0, y equals to 1 plus x square, x equals to 0 and x equals to 1. This is the same curve which you have already drawn, so I am not going to explain it again. So, we got this area. Now, divide the interval into n sub intervals of same size. So, this is your 0, so x naught is 0, x n is 1, x this is x 1, this is x n minus 1 and so on. So, since you are dividing the uh, interval 0 1 into n sub intervals of equal length, so 1 minus 0 by n will be giving you h and by this formula that x k is x naught plus k h x 1 will be 0 plus h is 1 by n. So, you get 1 by n into k. So, x k is so x k is k by n. So, x 1 is 1 by n, x 2 is 2 by n and x n minus 1 is n minus 1 by n and x n is 1. Let us write ln for this. So, l n will be h which is the length of 
each sub interval. So, ln in ln is summation of all these rectangles which lie below the curve. So, h into f x naught, so that is 1 plus 0 plus h into 1 plus function value at x 1, so 1 plus 1 square by n square plus last rectangle this one h into 1 plus the height of the function value at x n minus 1 because the function is increasing and the rectangle is lying below the curve. So, we get this. So, ln is let me write it again h into h is common throughout. So, we get 1 plus this is n times and then we get 1 square plus 2 square plus n minus 1 square by n square. Since we have proved that h is 1 by n, so I can replace h by 1 by n, we get here the summation as n plus the, the value of the summation is well known to you, you can write the summation of 1 square plus 2 square plus n minus 1 square as this. So, this is equal to 1 plus 1 by 6, 1 minus 1 by n, n by n, 2 minus 1 by n, this is ln. Now, take limit of this ln as n tends to infinity, we get 1 plus 1 by 6 into 2, this is equal to 1 plus 1 by 3, which is 4 by 3. So, that is the integral of 1 plus x square from 0 to 1. So, you can see that how this process of limit of sums can be used to compute area of uh, under a, area under a given curve, which lies between say x equals to a and, and x equals to b above x axis. Let us see one more example, so that you be more comfortable. So, compute area between y equals to e to the power minus x, y equals to 0, x equals to 0 and x equals to 1. So, this is your y axis, this is your x axis and e power minus x can be drawn like this. So, this is x equals to 0, this is x equals to 1, this is y equals to e power minus x, this is y equals to 0. So, again uh, similar to the previous case, you need to divide the interval x equals to 0 but and x equals to 1, the interval 0, 1 into n sub intervals. So, again will be 1 minus 0 by and that will be length of the each sub interval and x 1 uh, x k will be x naught plus k h here x naught is 0. So, x k is 0 plus k into 1 by n. So, x 1 is 1 by n, x 2 is 2 by n and so on. Point to note here that if you write ln, you will be getting h times function value, but here since the function is decreasing, this time the function value will not be governed by the function value at x equals to 0, but function value at x 1. So, height of this rectangle will be governed by the function value at x 1, because the function is decreasing. Similarly, for the last one, it will be function value at, function value at x equals to 1. So, ln is h into f x 1 plus for the second one function value at function value at x 2 for the height of the rectangle for lower sums x 2 plus h into f x n. Here your 
function f x is e to the minus x. So, you get ln as h into e to the power minus 1 by n. So, h is common, so we can write it outside 2 by n plus e to the power minus 1. So, we got ln as h times e to the power minus 1 by n plus e to the power minus 2 by n plus e to the power minus 1. You can write one more term before this, you get n minus 1 by n. So, this is a geometric progression and you can write the summation of this by simple formula. you get this which is equal to let me replace 1 by n by h and multiply by e to the power h. So, you get multiply and divide. So, you get e to the power h minus 1 and this will give you e to the power minus 1. You know that when n tends to infinity, h tends to 0, h tends to 0, n tends to infinity from this relationship, you can see that h tends to 0. So, limit of ln as n tends to infinity will be same as limit of ln as h tends to 0 and li this limit will be equal to 1 by e to the power minus 1 e to the power minus 1. The reason behind that is the limit of h by e to the power h minus 1 as h tends to 0 is 1. So, you can see that by this method you can compute, you could compute the value of the integral from 0 to 1 e to the power minus x dx the, as 1 minus e to the power minus 1. Let us see how antiderivatives can be used to solve definite integrals. Till now we have seen how to use limit of sums and find out the value of the definite integrals. Let us see how antiderivatives can be used to find out definite integrals. So, antiderivatives. So, uh, before we start solving problems, we have to discuss certain concepts. So, let us take a function which is positive and continuous and let us draw it. This is A, this is B. So, this function represents area function it is it is representing this shaded area and this is known as area function if i put b in place of x it will be giving you the area under the curve which lies between x equals to n x equals to b above x axis so by using this area function we state uh, two important theorems one is known as uh, fundamental theorem of calculus 1 and other is fundamental theorem of calculus 2. So, let us discuss first fundamental theorem of calculus. So, it says that if you have a function if f x is continuous on close interval a b and area function is defined as a 2 x f x d x then a dash x equals to f x.
The other theorem which is known as second fundamental theorem of calculus. will actually be used in computing the definite integrals and it says that let f x be a continuous function on a b close interval a b and capital F x is an antiderivative of small f x that is f dash x is equal to f x then a to b f x d x is equal to f x x equals to a to x equals to b which we write as f b minus f a. So, this theorem can be used to evaluate definite integrals provided we know the anti derivatives. Let us solve some problems and see how to use this theorem to evaluate the definite integrals. So, we have already evaluated certain integrals and we will take the help of those. So, we have seen that the value of this integral which represents area under the curve 1 plus x square which lies between x equals to 0 and x equals to 1 above x axis is equal to 4 by 3 and which we got from the process of limit of sums. Now, apply the method of antiderivatives and see whether you are getting the same value or not. So, by the, this theorem the value of this in integral will be f x from x goes from 0 to x goes to 1 where f x is antiderivative of 1 plus x square that is f dash x is 1 plus x square. So, we can easily find out that antiderivative of 1 plus x square will be this. So, antiderivative of 1 plus x square is x plus x cube by 3. So, value of the integral is x plus x cube by 3 x goes from 0 to 1. By applying the theorem, we see that we get 1 plus 1 by 3 minus 0 which is equal to 4 by 3 and which is same as the value that we got by the limit of sums. Let us take another example. We have find out the area lying between x equals to 0 and x equals to 1 of the curve below the curve e power minus x which lies above x axis and we have seen that it is 1 minus e to the power minus 1. Now, if you apply second fundamental theorem of calculus that is this. So, this will be equal to you can easily see that d by dx of this is e power minus x that means minus e power minus x is antiderivative of e power minus x. So, by the theorem you can write it like this and which is equal to one minus e to the power minus one and again you can see that this value which you have got from the limit of sums is same as the value which we have got by using antiderivatives. Now, in the next class we will be learning 
more about properties of definite integrals and solve more complicated problems. Thank you.